Rhonda Sue Tippin. Her mother was Thelma Claudine Langford. Her father was Charlie Aaron Forrest. She's preceded in death by her parents, by her husband, Jim Tippin, and 10 siblings. She's survived by Deborah and James Darby of Early, Carol and John Rubello of Abilene, Kevin and Barbara Scott of Goldthwaite, Timothy Scott of Memphis, Michael and Tara Scott of San Saba. Those were her kids. Her grandchildren, Marcus Corona, Derek Darby, Ryan Corona, Sky Darby, Shelby Scott, Taylor Scott, Joseph Paddock, KJ Scott, Haley Scott, Tara Scott, Zach Scott, John Short, Olivia Short, and Landon Short. And four great-grandchildren, Ethan Warren, Miles Jones, Jack Sutton, and Cooper Darby. She's survived by a brother, Gerald, who came down from White Bluff, Tennessee. We are gathered here for one reason, and that's because we love this woman. She has touched our lives in so many ways. That woman loved her sports. Oh my God, she knew more about sports than I ever will, or ever want to, for that matter. She loved college football season right now. Every week, she'd get on the DirecTV, get that guide up, and just start writing down what games she wanted to see, what channel they were, what time they were. I'd be coming through the living room or something. She'd, James, Tennessee plays in 30 minutes. And just every Saturday, it was just, it was just wonderful. She has called me on my phone to tell me Texas Tech was fixing to play before. Guns up. I want to read now a section of uh, the Bible. It's Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is about the virtues of a noble woman. Verse 10 starts, a wife of noble character who can find. She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Mom brought Jim good. Their marriage was just an inspiration. It was full of love, respect, laughter, and a bunch of stories. Several of y'all are here because you worked with her and you saw that she did do her work vigorously. After she fully retired, she started going to bingo, and she called that, hey, I'm going to work. Once she moved to Brownwood, she went to work a lot. Even up until last month, Mom would just decide to cook supper for us. Later that evening, she'd be at the sink doing the dishes. Deb and I'd go back there and say, hey, you know, we can do it for us. She said, no, I can stand up, I can still do it. Might take me a little while, but I'll get it done. Verse 20 says, she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. I remember one specific time, it was one winter, we had some people working on our house. God, this woman was incredible. And there was a family, a young family that was doing some work at our house, and we found out that they were sleeping in their car sometimes. Well, that night it was supposed to be, supposed to get to near freezing. Mom, without even knowing them, meeting them or anything, paid for them to stay in a hotel. It was, it was just, that's just the kind of woman she was. She would go out of her way to help people and just, and, and not ask anything in return or anything like that, just that, well, hey, let's just do this. She was just so giving. I remember a few times when she stopped driving herself to bingo, I'd get the driver to bingo and I, I would go there. And even though it might've been the same story every other night, she would laugh just as hard and we would just, just laugh going for, in fact, sometimes she'd tell the same story, going to bingo and coming home from bingo and laugh just as hard. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. We can talk about the instruction on her tongue, okay? It was the wand away. I remember one time I was just digging. She wanted some flowers in the front, so I was just digging a hole. In her robe, oxygen tube, everything, she comes to the door. In fact, Deb has a picture of her doing it, and she's telling me, three inches to the left or what I mean just she wanted it her way and she was not afraid to tell you why you were wrong about things she loved her grandkids she asked about them all the time she adored the great game grandkids I mean my god Deb and I'd go back there she want to know about Jack so how did Ethan do today well when am I going to see Cooper blah 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 you know how's Miles doing who did he run over today playing football how many touchdowns did he make it was just all the time and constant and they loved her Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. According to the scripture that I've just read, we have just proven how noble and how good a woman mom was. 2 Timothy 4, 7 says, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Mom's race in this body is finished, but we have faith and hope in the love of God that her spirit is racing on. We are going to honor mom's wishes 
and her family and loved ones are going to spread Rasher on Jim's grave so their bodies can be together as their spirits are now.